In this lesson, we will learn about Domain Naming Operations Master. We will first start with answering the question, what happens when a new domain added? Then we will learn about the configuration partitions and domain naming operations master role. And after that, we will learn more about the enterprise admins group. And finally, we sum up the lesson with the keynotes. When the first domain controller is installed, it creates an Active Directory database for the new forest with the following partitions in the configuration partition. The root domain partition, the enterprise configuration partition, the enterprise schema partition, the forest DNS zones partition, and the domain DNS zones partition. When a new domain is added into the ID forest, it will add these additional partitions in the configuration partition, the new domain partition, the new domain DNS zones partition. So where is the partition store? As you can see, the partition X and the container to store the domain partitions the partition is stored in the configuration partition of the Active Directory database. The configuration partition is created in the root domain when the first DC in the forest is built. Due to the change to the partition is very impactful to the ID forest, it is critical to have the partitions owned by only one domain controller to prevent any conflicts from happening. Let's now learn about the domain naming operation master. In an active directory forest, the partitions is owned by only one domain controller assigned with domain operation master role in the root domain. The domain naming operation master is the only DC that can add or remove domains or cross references to domains in external directories. The partition updates will be replicated from the domain naming operation master to all other DCs in the forest. All other DCs can only read the partitions to perform their operations. Now let's take a look at this Active Directory forest. In this forest, GPVDC01 is the domain naming master. It can read, create, or delete the objects in the partition container. Other domain controllers like GPVDC02 or OPVDC01 can only read the partitions. Now, when GPVDC01 perform any update to the partition container, the update will be replicated to GPVDC02 and OPVDC01 like this. As we know, the domain naming operations master role only exists in the root domain. However, the domain naming operations master role can be transferred to any domain controllers in the root domain. Therefore, there is only one domain naming operation master role per forest. Now, let's take a look at this active directory forest. In this forest, GPVDC01 is currently holding the domain naming operation master role. So it can read, create, or delete the objects in the partition container. And in the root domain IT life skills .local, we have two domain controllers, GPVDC01 and GPVDC02. So we can transfer the domain naming master role 
from GPVDC01 to GPVDC02 like this. As you can see, after the row transfer complete, GPVDC01 can only read to the partition container and GPVDC02 can read, create, or delete objects in the partition container. Let's now open the configuration partition of the Active Directory database. To do that, we need to open the ADSI edit tool. And here we right click and click on connect to. And here we select the configuration and then click on OK. Now we can access the configuration partition of the Active Directory database. Let's expand it and click on the partition container. Now we need to right click on the partition container and click on properties. As you can see, currently the owner of the partition container is GPVDC01, which means GPVDC01 is currently holding the domain naming operations master role. Now let's click on the security tab and click on the domain admins. As you can see, the domain admin of the root domain IT life skills have the read, write, and create all child objects on the partition container. Now let's click on the enterprise admin. As you can see, the enterprise admin group have the read, write, create all child object, and delete all child objects of the partitions container in the configuration partition of the Active Directory database. As you can see in this screenshot, members of the enterprise admins group have full control on the partition container, which means the members can read, write, create all child objects, delete all child objects of the partition's container. For security reason, the enterprise admins group should be left empty. We only add accounts to the enterprise admins group when the accounts are used to add or remove domains in the Active Directory or add or remove cross references to domains in external directories or transfer AD domain naming master role from one domain controller to another domain controller in the root domain. This is the end of this lesson. Let's read the keynotes.